Good night, everyone. And it is such a privilege to be here. Before we begin our service, let us all reverently bow our head and close our eyes as we pray. Almighty God and Eternal Father, I thank you for bringing us to this evening worship on a Thursday, dear Father, so that we can come and pray and worship and intercede for others, dear Father. God, I ask that you, you can allow this 10 days of prayer to pass smoothly and for someone to be blessed, dear Lord. And if not someone, everyone, dear Father. Be with tonight's proceedings. Help everyone to do their part well. And those who are listening, let them be blessed and uh, be able to be revived at the end of this 10 days of prayer. I thank you for hearing and answering our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, I would like to take this opportunity to welcome every one of you to our 10 days of prayer. It is, uh, the theme is seeking revival. And what better way to seek revival than through prayer? Because prayer gives us power. And when we have that power, we feel refreshed, we feel vitalized, we feel energized. So welcome to Seek and Revival, 10 Days of Prayer. At this time, we'll go into our inspiration with Elder Kenwin Applewhite. Good evening, everyone, and welcome once again. It's a, it's a privilege to be in the house of the Lord once more. It's a privilege to be on this platform once more. And this evening, as we go into our song service, I want to invite you to take your hymnals in hand with me as we sing some songs of praises unto God. Amen? This evening, we would start our song service with hymn number 341. 341. To God be the glory, great things he had done. So loved he the world that he gave us his Son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory. Great things he had done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of love to every believer, the promise of God, the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father, true Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he had done. Great things he had taught us, great things he had done, and great or rejoicing through Jesus 
as the sun, but pure and higher and greater will be. Oh, wonder or oh, transport when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father, true Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he had done. Amen. Our second song would be hymn number 517. Hymn number 517. My faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary, Saviour divine. Now hear me while I pray, take all my guilt away. Oh, let me from this day be holy thine. May thy rich grace impart strength to my fainting heart. My zeal inspired, as thou hast died for me, O me, my love to thee, pure woman, changeless be a living fire. While life's dark maze I tread, and grief around me spread. Be thou my guide. Bid darkness turn to day. Wipe sorrow stares away. No, let me ever stray from thee aside. Amen. We will now make use of hymn number 608. Hymn number 608. Faith is the victory. And camped along the hills of light, ye Christian soldiers rise. And press the battle ere the night shall veil the glowing skies. Against the foe in veils below, let all your strengths be heard. Fate is the victory we know. That overcomes the world. Faith is the victory. Faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. On every hand, the fool we find drawn up in dread array. Let tents of peace be left behind, and onward to the free. Salvation's helmet on each head, 
with truth all good above. The earth shall tremble neath our tread, and echo with our shout. Faith is the victory, faith is the victory. That overcomes the world. To him that overcomes the food, white raiment shall be given. Before the angels he shall know his name confessed in heaven. Then onward from the hills of light, all hearts with love aflame. We'll vanquish all the hosts of night in Jesus' conquering name. Faith is the victory. Faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. Amen. Finally, our, our last song is hymn number 547. Hymn number 547. Be thou my vision. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, save that thou King or sleeping, thy presence, my life. Be thou my wisdom, and thou my true word. I ever with thee, thou with me, Lord. Thou my great Father, I thy true Son. Riches I heed not, no man's empty praise. Thou mine inheritance now and always. Thou and thou only burst in my heart. I, King of heaven, my treasure thou art. I, King of heaven, when victory won, may I reach heaven's joys, O bright heaven sun. Heart of my own heart, whatever before, still be my vision, O ruler of Thank you very much for joining me in song service. At this time, we would now move on with the next item on our program. Okay, at this time, we will now have our scripture reading by Sister Rosan Ramu. A pleasant good night and welcome. Our scripture reading is taken from Ephesians 
chapter 3, verse 3, chapter 8, 18. May be able to compare, comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, and the depth and height. Amen. All right, good night, everyone. At this time, we'll have our intercessory prayer session. We will be having three prayers. So I will be first, Sister Abigail will be second, followed by Brother Kenwin, who is third. And then we'll have our introduction to our speaker, followed by our team song, and then our speaker. Amen? Let us bow our heads to prayer. Our loving Father in heaven, great is thy name, and you are worthy to be praised. We come before your presence at this time, Lord Jesus, knowing that you are our on-time God, knowing that you are our redeemer, our friend, our prayer answerer, knowing that you are wonderful, our counselor, and most important, you are our Father. We come before you, Lord, because we know that when prayer goes up, power comes down. And you said in your word that if we require anything, Lord, that we should ask. And we should ask very, very um, persistent so that uh, our prayers can be heard before your throne. Father, we are so thankful for this opportunity to even be able to be in your throne room this evening. Knowing that, knowing the type of people who we are, Lord, sinful sinners, we know, Lord, at this time that it is a privilege to come before your throne and to pray and to seek your face. Father, we come before you asking you to forgive us from our sins and to cleanse us, O oh Lord, from all unrighteousness. Father, as we bow before you, we just want to thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you for life. We thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning, for food on our tables for shelter, even for the little rain we had today, Lord, and the sunshine. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for this morning when the, in the 40 days of prayer, we thank you for the messages we receive, Lord. We thank you for you know, getting up early and being able to be a part of that 40 days of prayer. We even thank you in a very special way for giving us this opportunity to take part in this 10 days of prayer, Lord. We know that prayer is a real opportunity and we should take every advantage we can of praying and seeking your face. So Father, we thank you for the speakers. We thank you for the persons who will be preaching and um, saying your words to us night after night during this 10, 10 days of prayer. We pray, Lord, that those who haven't logged in, that they would log in and log in soon, Lord, and receive this wonderful blessing that is in store for them. So we pray, Lord, at this time that you will be with our speaker, Dr. Pilgrim, in a very special way, that he will be touched with a life call from your altar, Lord, and that what he says to us would be um, a message straight from your throne. Continue to bless us, Lord. Help us have a wonderful sitting in your presence. It's our humble prayer through no other name but your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we continue, let us keep our head bowed and our eyes closed. Dear Lord, we continue, dear Father, in this 10 days of prayer. We thank you for the opportunity to intercede on behalf of others, dear Father. At this time, I bring this COVID-19 pandemic that we are still facing and the world is still suffering through their father, Lord. Now we see that there is a new strain and it is affecting more persons there, Lord. And Father, we know that you know the outcome of every situation, even before it begins. And we give you thanks and praise that even though there is a pandemic, 
we know that you are the God that heals. You are the God that delivers and you alone are the only, is the only answer that this world needs. Even though there's a vaccine, there's only so much vaccines can do there alone. But we know that your hand is upon us. We even bring our members who are not well at this time, those who are sick in body, sick in mind, and even spiritually, their Father, Lord. We ask that your hand will be upon them, that you will touch them, those who are in the hospitals right now. Their father, even my nephew, is in the hospital, you know, and he's a little baby. And we thank you for your healing hand upon all of them, their father, that you will bring them out. You will let them know it is because of you and your mercies that are new every morning that we are, they are able to wake up their father despite the pain and the aches that you will touch them and remove it from them, their father, Lord in your time and that they will be able to give you the praise and testify of the goodness of the Lord and what he has done for them. So we give you praise dear father and we thank you for what you have done in Jesus name. Amen. At this time, we will continue with our third prayer session. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Father, once again, this evening, Lord, we just want to thank you for granting us this opportunity of prayer. And we thank you, Lord, for the time that you have granted us that we could be able to come and be a part of this, not just a program, Lord, but this experience seeking revival and seeking your Holy Spirit to do a mighty work in our lives. This evening, Lord, we ask for forgiveness for sin, and we ask that you would cleanse us from all unrighteousness, and that by the blood of the Lamb, Lord, we would be made right with you. We would be reconciled unto you. And we pray, dear God, that your Holy Spirit would be able to use us and use each individual on this platform in a mighty way to continue carrying the gospel to the world. This evening, Lord, we want to Lift Pastor Morgan and uh, the evangelistic seminar that he's conducting in Barbados at this moment. <clears throat> we pray, dear Lord, that your Holy Spirit would continue to empower him and continue to equip him to fulfill the task that you have placed him under. And we pray, dear God, that those who are in the hearing of his voice whether in person or in on the platforms and the various platforms that we are utilizing, we pray, dear God, that they would be richly blessed, they would be encouraged, and as a result of your word, lives would be transformed and hearts will be turned over to you through this evangelistic outreach seminar, dear Father. We pray, dear God, that you would be with those who are in his presence, Lord, those who are assisting him in, in executing this, this um, mission. And I pray, Lord, that you would help them to work together as a team with unity and with love for one another, and that the people around them, Lord, would, the people who are experiencing this seminar, Lord, would also experience that love also. We ask, Father, that you would save as many as would like to be saved in your kingdom from that seminar. If possible, we ask that you would save the whole of Barbados in, into your kingdom. That when you return, Lord, no one would be left behind. We ask, so, Father, that you would continue to be with them. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Blessing in Jesus' name, everybody. And a good evening to all of you worshipping with us this evening. This is the voice of Pastor Justin Alwyn Alexis. I found this text on this message, sorry, on the, the Steins chat. That's a chat uh, organized by members of the Seventh-day Adventist District of Faisabad. And the, the, the message said, the sweetest time of the day is when you pray. 
because you are talking to the one who loves you the most. I've added to that text, your voice matters. His voice matters most. Listen and obey. This 10 days of prayer and fasting is but uh, an additional emphasis to our daily life of prayer. And those of us who need the extra boost, the extra emphasis in giving God more access to our lives, we all do. Uh, together we are utilizing this 10 days and 40 days of prayer and fasting as we begin the new cycle of a year to give God greater access to us. And this evening, we are grateful to have sharing our worship moment. This evening, a friend of mine from our sister church in the zone, the Seventh-day Adventist Church at Kokie. Uh, he's the first elder of that church, and he's also one of the uh, strategic thinkers of our conference. He is a professor uh, by profession. He is a man of God by second birth. And he is a, a husband and father, a family man. And he's also a friend of my family, Dr. Stephen Pilgrim. Um, we share many moments together. Sister Myrtle and I share um, significant time with him on the Southern Academy School Board. And this evening, we are really happy and grateful that you have agreed, Dr. Pilgrim, to come on to sure. our worship session this evening and bless us with what God has inspired you to share with us. So at this time, I want to invite... Dr. Pilgrim, yes. as I've introduced him to you, to so deliver what God has equipped him to impart unto all the listeners this evening and all who will log on whenever uh, they have the opportunity to be touched by this service this evening. So the platform is now yours, Ella Pilgrim, and deliver what the Lord has given you to impart. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Justin Alexis. It's a privilege and a pleasure to be here with you, um, Sister Myrtle, and with the church in Mondesi, and as you rightly said, and so many others throughout Trinidad and Tobago and perhaps the Caribbean and wider who would um, check into the YouTube now or later. This is one of the, the new normals that our church services are not just for now. They are for as long as necessary because people could keep tuning in and you never know what God will do because God can do anything that he chooses to do. So thank you, Pastor Justin. It's my privilege to be here. Thank you, Sister Myrtle, for the invitation as well. Um, this 10 days of prayer is really very powerful because it allows us to step aside from the daily vicissitudes of life and pause and take a breath. It's, it's as though 2020, God forced the world to take a breath. We didn't anticipate this. Some things that we're doing now, some people would have said, we could never do that. But now we know that that's not true because we were forced to take a breath. The 10 days of prayer kind of given us a chance to take a breath and just spend a little bit more time with God. Tonight, I'm happy to, to share the topic on grasping the gift grasping the gift and that gift really is the love of christ the love of christ you know john 3 16 is perhaps one of the most popular texts in the entire bible we know it by heart i'm sure we could repeat it for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life and some of us could say it in other languages and so on it's such a common text but you know at the heart of the Christian faith is John 3, 16. Because it is love that sent the Savior to this world. It is love that reaches us and takes us out of a, of a chasm 
a, a depth that sometimes we are just falling and falling and we can't seem to be getting up. And the love of Christ is what reaches us and pulls us out. This love of Christ that we talk about tonight is indeed perhaps one of the most significant part of the Christian life, the love of Christ. But what I like about John 3, 16 is that it literally says, for God so loved. <laughs> it didn't start with, for Steve so loved God. It didn't start with, for, for Justin so loved God, or Maureen so loved God, or Roseanne so, or Curtis. No, no, no. It says, for God so loved. So the love starts with God. He is the one who loved us first. And he is the one who, as a result, made the big sacrifice of taking his only begotten son and sending him to show us how we could live above sin and to take us out and to pay the penalty of sin so that we don't have to pay it. That's love. And so tonight the topic is grasping the gift. You know, somebody gives you a gift, you could say, yes, thank you, or no, thank you. What is your answer tonight? God is giving you the gift of love. What are we going to do with it? Tonight, there are three things that we, we want to focus on. Receiving the gift, surrendering to God, and growing through Christ with that gift. You see, love it is that provides all of that. I just want us to have a prayer before we delve into the word. Father God, we thank you. We praise you, God, for this opportunity to discuss your love. Your love that took us from where we were and set our feet on a rock. It is your love who, that found us in sin and reached out and pulled us and gave us a new life. It's all you. We thank you tonight. Speak, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So the key text is Ephesians 3.18. How wide and how long and how high and how deep is the love of Christ. And that text simply points out that we can't really fathom God's love. I'll tell you, you know, if you say you love me and you treat me badly, I might think, yes, okay, maybe it's just a bad experience. And then you treat me badly again tomorrow and the day after and the day after and you continue. Then it won't be long before I question whether you truly love me. But you know what? We do that to God all the time. But yet he loves us. He still loves us in spite of ourselves. I remember hearing a story, um, uh, an illustration given by um, Pastor Simbala of the Brooklyn Tabernacle. Um, I remember him um, on a video telling the story of one night when he was preaching and he preached about the love of Christ and he talked about how sweet the love of Christ is and how wide it is and that God's arms are open to receive anyone. And he said, whoever you are, wherever you are, just come and God is willing to receive you. I remember hearing and seeing that video and it impacted my, my, my life so much. I remember it now and I share back with you. And he said that while he was preaching, down the distance, he saw this gentleman coming, this who looked like a tramp, a man who was a street dweller. He saw him coming up and he thought in his heart, oh, I, I couldn't take on someone robbing me today. Who is this coming in here? He judged the guy immediately, thinking that the guy was coming to rob him. And he said, while he continued to make his appeal, of God's love to the people, the man continued to make his way forward, continued. And it dawned on him through the Holy Spirit that this man wasn't coming to rob him. This man was responding to his call. It appears that he heard the call being said, come and find Christ, come and find rest, come and find love. And the guy responded, even though he was a tramp sleeping under the step of the church, he came out from there and was responding. And the pastor said, at that point, the Holy Spirit convicted him of his sinfulness. And he realized how judgmental he was and how much he was pushing away those who God wanted to bring into him because of his love. 
And he asked me, he said, Lord, please forgive me. Forgive me for judging this man. And the guy came up to him. And the guy came right up with all his matted hair and his stench and all. And he said, he reached his hand out and the guy came right into his bosom. And he said that smell, which normally would have been repulsive to him, started to smell like some kind of sweet aroma because God convicted him and converted that spirit of judgmentalism and filled him instead with love. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that's what the power of love can do. The power of love turns a sinner into a saint, turns a drunkard into a man who we see Christ died for, turns somebody who is a criminal into a one who Christ could change around and turn around and make a new. That's what the love of Christ does. It's wide, it's long, it's high, and it's deep, according to Ephesians 3.18. So how do we experience it? How do we experience the fullness of God's love? How do we wrap ourselves around this love that is available? Well, the Bible tells us in Ephesians 3.16, we need to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. The Holy Spirit is the first step in receiving the love of Christ. You see, Pastor Simbala couldn't accept this man until the Holy Spirit convicted him and he realized that he was a sinner saved by grace. Next, after we receive the Holy Spirit, we surrender our lives to Christ and we live in a close relationship with him. The Bible says in verse 17 of Ephesians chapter 3, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And that word dwell is more than just come and live and go. To, to dwell is to stay, is to make your abode, is to make your home. What God wants to do, Christ wants to make his home in our hearts through faith. And in that way, we surrender our lives to Christ. It means that we don't live our lives the way that we want. We don't make decisions because we want to. We do that which he impacts and impresses our life to do. So that we walk and we live in a close relationship with him. And then the third one, apart from receive the Holy Spirit, surrender our lives to Christ. The third one is true faith. We grow and mature in Christ. Through faith, we grow and mature in Christ. It was Paul who told the, the, uh, the early Christians that he wished that they grow out of milk. Don't stay as a baby with milk. Start to, start to deal with rough sauce. Start to deal with some dumpling. Start to deal with some cassava and some dashing. That is me putting it in my words now. That's what God wants us to do, to grow and mature in our faith. Some of us, we are still baby-like. Any little thing and we're ready to leave the church. Somebody just say something to us and, and we beg, you don't want any office for 2021. We're not mature. We're not mature in Christ because we are too soft. The devil could pick us out and sift us out. The Bible says, though, that Christ is praying for us that we be strong. You know that happened to, to, to Peter? Peter was weak. He thought he was strong, but he was weak. He was impetuous, took a sword, cut off the, the, the servant's air, always quick to jump at something. Lord, I'll go with you wherever you go, you know, and, and fighting up to be up in front until Jesus said to him, get thee behind me, Satan. It wasn't him he was talking to, but Satan pushing him. You see, maturity and growth comes over time. And it comes with a relationship with Christ over time. It comes with the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And it comes with our surrender. The third step is growth and maturity through Christ and the Holy Spirit. Verse 17 says that we are rooted and established in love. The word rooted and established suggests that we are solid in the word. We are solid in the love of Christ. Nobody can come to me and, and tell me that Christ doesn't love me because of all the troubles I'm going through. I'm solid, I'm rooted and established by God's grace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. That's what that text means, that we will be solid, rooted and established because Christ 
loves us and he wants us to grow and mature in that love. As a result, we will experience the fullness of God's love. And that's the question that we're answering tonight. How do you experience the fullness of God's love? Through receiving the Holy Spirit, through surrendering our lives to Christ and dwelling with him, and through having our faith grow and mature and be rooted and established in the love of Christ. You know, I could stop right here tonight. That's our sermon for tonight. But I want to say a little bit more. You know, um, the parable in Luke 15 uh, talks about the prodigal son. We know the story, the prodigal son, but I want to just pick out a few key points. For those who don't know, the parable of the prodigal son um, was given by Jesus and explained that one day a young son went to his father and asked to receive all his inheritance so that he could go away on his own. Of course, his father didn't want that, but out of love, he, he let the guy, he let the son take the, the inheritance and go. But the father was very sad. But the son still went. Bible says he went to a faraway place. A faraway place represents a place where you're not within the presence of God. It was where he, he couldn't, father couldn't see him. The father couldn't tell him, son, don't go with that friend. Son, don't stay out so late in the night. Son, don't watch that show on TV. Son, don't play that game. Son, don't listen to that music. Son, don't put on those clothes. The father wasn't able to tell him that. He went to a faraway place. How many of us tonight are in a faraway place? We're in a place where nobody could talk to us, where we feel we're all on our own. We could do what we want. That's the son. Desperate with all his friends around him, he was still desperate because they didn't really love him. They were there for his money. The parable went on to say that when famine hit, he lost all that he had. And not just that, he was gambling and he, lo he lost everything. Bible tells us that hardship hit him and he became unhungered, which means that he was hungry, couldn't get a job, lost everything. His friends turned away from him. All the people that he used to pay to have a good time with left him. What a lesson for those who believe that the world is your friend. The world is not your friend. The world is not your friend. God is our refuge and our fortress, a very present help in trouble. You know, when you think you're in trouble and you turn to your friend outside, they walk away. They can't help you. Only God. And so just as often hardships happen in life, Chappie started, started asking himself, you know, what am I doing out here? What exactly am I doing? I'm out here struggling. Can't get something to eat. Can't get a job. Lost all my money. Lost all my friends. And my father is rich with houses and land. Let me go back and beg him to just be a servant because I know he wouldn't take me back as his son. And I could imagine seeing this son, you know, struggling with a decision. Mixed feelings. Because he had no idea what the father was doing. He thought... The father gave him and kind of cast him off. But little did he realize that love doesn't operate like that. When God's love takes a hold of you, even when you run far from him, he's still there. It's you running away from him. God doesn't change. God is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. So when you think that you have done so much wrong that God will never for forgive you and God will never love you again, that's the devil talking to you. God's love is so high. God's love is so deep. God's love is so long and so wide that he will always reach out for you regardless. I want you to know that this man came back to the father and the story says that before he even reached home, he spotted the, the father saw him. I'm sorry. The father saw him because the father was there looking out for him and the father ran to him and pulled him in. I could imagine the son shocked because he didn't think the father would be looking out. But the story is that every day the father was out there looking for him. Every day the father was praying that he will come to his senses. Every day the father was saying, come back to me. I love you, son. That's what God does to us, ladies and gentlemen. God loves us with an everlasting love. And even though we might have strayed, there are some of you listening tonight, you might have strayed from the Lord. You might, once upon a time, you used to be a Christian. Once a time, perhaps you are Adventist. Maybe today you're a sad Ventist or a bad Ventist. I don't know what kind of Ventist you are. But right now God is saying to you, whatever you are, God can pull you in because he has never stopped loving you. Would you say amen? 
He has never stopped loving you. So you ask me, how could I experience the fullness of that love? Well, I just gave you. <laughs> ask the Holy Spirit to come into your heart. Say, Holy Spirit, I accept you. Why not pray the Spirit me? Father, thank you for loving me. Father, please help me to love you with all my heart, with all my being, all my emotions, all my strength. Thank you, Father, for already answering this request according to your will. I want to love you. I want to love my neighbors with your help. Make me a channel of your love. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, if you pray that prayer with me, it tells me that you believe that God is love and you have accepted that love. You know, some people say that the love of God is divine, is not human, so we can't reach it. You know what? I say the love of Christ is able to reach me because he lived a life as a human. The love of God is divine because he sent Jesus Christ to die for me. The love of Christ. So you put the God there together, the love of God is so wonderful. It reaches me no matter how far I go, no matter how deep I go. He's always there telling me, turn my eyes to him. You know, there's a song that says, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face and the things of this world will go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. How can we grasp the depth of God's love? I just want us to know that God's Holy Spirit is willing for us to fill us so that we could grasp the depth. Many of us, we only know God and God's love intellectually. We could read about it. Perhaps we could even talk about it. But some of us have never experienced it. Some people don't even know what is love. I'm talking about human love now, let alone God's love because they feel that everybody's against them. Whenever you're in a position where you feel that you don't know how to love, call upon God and ask him for a measure of his love. Ask him. We don't love because we don't ask. We don't get because we don't ask. Ask so that you may obtain. The Bible says, ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Tonight, brothers and sisters, I give you Jesus. He's the peace that passes all understanding. I give you Jesus. He's the one that loved me from the beginning. He's the one that loves me up till the end. He's the one who loves me now. I just want to give you Jesus because John 3, 16 says that God so loved the world. He gave me Jesus, his only begotten son, so that whosoever believe it, me, if I believe in him, I will not perish but I'll have everlasting life. I give you Jesus tonight. He's the one who loves you. He's the one who wants to have a relationship with you. Give up those who just love you for what you have and love Jesus who loves you in spite of who you are. I want to thank you tonight for listening to the word of God. I trust and pray that God's word will be like in you, welling up a spring of living water I pray that God will strengthen you with power through his Holy Spirit into your innermost being, that God will strengthen your heart, dwell in your heart through faith. And you, brothers and sisters, friends, relatives, neighbors, you'll be rooted and established in love. And you may have power together with all God's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. May God bless you richly as I hand over to Sister Renault for the closing. God bless you all. Be strong. Be faithful. God is love. Amen. Amen. We'd like to thank Dr. Pilgrim for that on-time message. And there is a song called When God Ran. It's a very beautiful song. And I hope we could... Go on YouTube and find it and play it. It's, it's really interesting. At this time, I would like for us to partake of our team song. It's uh, the climax of our entire search for revival. So as Dr. Pilgrim said, love is of God and he loves us and he give us God. He give us Jesus. So let us... Uh, Join in as we sing our team song.
Touch your people once again. Lord, you see your tired servants and your broken, wounded soldiers. Oh, how much we need your precious healing hand. We need the power of the cross as the only source for us when we stand facing final battle cries restore your church again touch your people once again with your precious holy hand we pray let your kingdom shine upon this earth through a living and glorious church not for temporary deeds but to restore authority and power let a mighty rushing wind Touch your servant once again. Let that mighty rushing wind blow in. Touch your people once again. Amen. Like to thank Pastor John Lomakan for singing the Adventist theme song. Anytime we have revival, that is the song that I will normally hear growing up as a youth in Faisabad Church. At this time, I would like to remind us of tomorrow. Tomorrow, we will be at the Seventh day Adventist Church in Mondesi. And we will be continuing our 10 days of prayer, seeking revival. I will not tell you who the speaker is. You come to Mondesi Church and you would be filled with blessings. Also, we have the 40 days of prayer going on. It's every morning from 4.30 to 5.30 a.m. And it is power packed. The speakers are filled with the Holy Ghost, and it's truly the best thing to wake up to at the morning. So join us tomorrow morning at 4 30 and to 5 30 a.m. as we join the un join with the Caribbean Union as we pray for 40 days.
We thank all for contributing to our service this evening, and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow to Seeking Revival. Have a pleasant night. Amen.